welcome to the video. Thanks for watching. You're going to be watching an amazing day of me purchasing a new car. Pretty crazy, right? Um, this is actually the second time I'm going to do this. I drove three plus hours five or six days ago, had an agreement signed, and the dealership sold it out from underneath of me. Screwed me over completely. So now I found another one, and now I'm driving two hours, so I really hope I don't waste my time. I'll have to probably tell that full story at some point in another video. We'll have to see if that comes out, but on our way right now to Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to pick up a Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit. So keep watching right now. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. Maybe you will like it, maybe you won't. If you don't like cars, you might not like this, but we're gonna be doing a workout later today. We're gonna be getting a haircut. There's gonna be a lot of cool stuff in this video, so keep watching. Military Museum? It's to the left, yeah, it's a little distance up, up, up to the left. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, I'm driving through right now, making our way to Chambersburg. Quick pit stop out here at Gettysburg. I'm not exactly sure what battlefield this is, but it's kind of a crazy humbling thing to see all this stuff. But there's a cool statue and a bunch of cool stuff and people are running and there's a bunch of statues around here, but um, just stopping really quick to kind of take a look and it's always kind of cool to see stuff like this. Who knows who they are? Trapped in the cut, dude. So as the you can eternal see, light. yeah, this is the Eternal Light Memorial. It was dedicated by Teddy Roosevelt in 1904 and rededicated in 36. Don't listen to anything I'm saying because it's completely fake. It's a Saturday at the battlefield. Yeah. Everybody's talking right now and looking over shit. It's kind of funny and it's fucking hilarious. All right, people, check it out. So I don't want to be wheeling and dealing on video. That's not my goal. It's going to be a used car, so I'm going to try to talk them down a little bit more. So I'm going to put the camera away, focus on that when we get to the dealership in two miles, and get myself a new car. Here's a quick video. You know, check it out. Let me know what you think of it. Leave a comment below. Smash the thumbs up button right now if you like the car. Let me know what you think of it. Thanks for watching so far, and peep the new car. Back of the highway and come further down. You've arrived at your destination. So, as you can tell right now, there is no brand new car behind me at all. There's no brand new car. This video is a complete nightmare. Welcome to story time. As I mentioned in the very beginning of the entire thing, this is the second time I attempted to buy a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Not the first, the second time. Point being is this. In this part of the video, as you can tell, I did not get that Jeep for a bunch of other BS reasons. And I'm over car dealerships. Anyway. Let's get into the story. All right, guys, so not only is this video all over the place now, this is story time. I'm gonna tell you a little bit of what happened on the last two car purchases that I tried to have. More importantly than that, bear with me on the audio right now because my microphone broke and I bought a new one and Amazon shipped me the wrong one, so they're gonna ship me a new one and at least Amazon did the right thing in all of this. They're gonna hook it up with a brand new microphone, a Rode, Mike Pro Plus, shout out to those amazing people at Amazon. Anyway, point being is this, let's tell the first story. So in the last couple weeks I've been looking for cars because Chelsea is landing literally like 
two or three days from now and I'm not going to have a car and I'm selling my truck tomorrow and life is all over the place. While you're watching this right now, I am in California. Two days prior, Friday evening, when I filmed this, I was in Pennsylvania. So I took a red eye back to California Saturday, packed all of my house, and I'm flying back to Pennsylvania with Chelsea and Haven on Monday night. So that's a big part of this because I need a car ASAP. If I don't have a car, I'm screwed and I can't get to work. I'm not going to take my wife's car and strand her at home. What kind of jerk would do that? Not this guy. Let me tell you that much. But so now you have a little bit of the backstory and why it's so important to get the car. Not only did I not get the car, but I also did not get to work out that day because it was an entire wasted day. So I didn't get to do that with my dad like I had planned. I did get Chipotle though. Didn't film any of that because I was so upset and angry after being screwed for the second time of not getting a car that I didn't want to film anything else and the entire day was thrashed. But I also got a haircut, as you can tell. More of the, mm, mm. I also got a haircut, as you can tell right here. Hopefully you guys like that. So if you like it, drop a thumbs up. Thumbs up this video right now if you like this haircut. Not for any other reason because this video is all over the place. Ba 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 ba! Time for story time. Ah, so I was extremely stoked. I randomly found a 2015 certified Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit with less than 25,000 miles. I negotiated the price, I made it happen, and it was in my price range. I talked them down like two or three grand. I was stoked. I put in a deposit, I signed a purchase order. A purchase order, for those of you who don't know, is basically me confirming that I'm gonna buy the car, and they always try to pitch it to you, where they say, hey, send me the purchase order signed, we'll make sure it's fully executed, and give me a deposit, and I'll put a sold sticker on your car. So I did that on Wednesday of two weeks ago. Wednesday of two weeks ago, I did that, and I wasn't able to get up there to North Jersey, because that's where the first Jeep Grand Cherokee was. I had to drive three and a half hours, so anyway. Getting a little out of the fucking, you know, <clears throat> I'm getting out of it a little bit. So the first Jeep Grand Cherokee was located in North Jersey, which was three and a half hours away from me. And I was willing to drive up there because the price was so good. I negotiated them down. I was ecstatic on the price and low mileage certified. So I knew it was going to be safe. I knew that if there was a warranty on it, that's always a huge thing you want to make sure you look into. Certified, pre-owned, always. It covers you to... 100,000 plus miles for BMWs and Mercedes, it's unlimited miles. So it's extremely important to make sure you keep that in mind when looking at cars. So I negotiated everything, signed the purchase agreement, emailed it back, put a deposit on my credit card, the car was mine. He said he was gonna take it off the lot, he said that he was going to put a sold sticker on it, and I was stoked. So I relaxed all weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and it came to be Monday, the day off that I had and was heading up there. I woke up super early with my dad. I woke my dad up probably at like six in the morning. Him and I were both stoked because we were gonna drive an hour or two, stop at the gym in Allentown because I scheduled us to have free day passes and I was gonna shoot that as a part of this video. Never got to do that because one and a half hours into the three hour or so drive, I got a text from the dealer from the sales guy I've been communicating with saying, hey man, sorry, it's too early in the morning and I didn't want to call and wake you up, but your Jeep was vandalized. Vandalized, dude? Really? You're gonna say it was vandalized? So instantly my dad and I are like, what is going on? This is bullshit, this is crazy, what's going on? And so we came up with 5 million different sort of situations with, you know, what could have happened. Did they sell it? Did they get rid of it? Did they, did they actually get damaged? Did someone go up and joyride it and break into it? Did they steal the CD player? Did someone back into it? They're embarrassed. Did someone spray paint it? Who knows, right? So I texted the guy back basically saying, hey, listen, we're already halfway there. We would love to see the car and see what damage and what was vandalized on it. And we would love to kind of figure out how we're gonna move forward. If it's some paint, if it's small bumpers and stuff, that stuff can be fixed. I'm really stoked on this car. So instantly when I did that, the, the guy like didn't respond. It was kind of like no response for a while. So I called him, I was like, hey man, let's find out what happened. Hit up the salespeople who are already there or not. I was like, yo man, hit up the people who are already there at the dealership. Hit up the tech guys that are in the service area and see what, what's going on with the car. So 
Um, when he called the first time, so you have to realize this guy knew nothing about the vandalization of this Jeep. His manager left a voicemail on his voicemail the night before when he was off about this situation. So he had not seen the car yet, which I find to be absolutely ridiculous and completely crazy in general, because you think you would no more information like what's going on maybe photos anything especially when a buyer is coming to pick it up the next morning so i asked him for more information the tech people who were or the ser the service people who were inside of their place doing business oil changes at 7 30 in the morning supposedly could not find the car it was no longer on the dealer's lot it was gone rogue must have disappeared. It was so damaged and vandalized it disappeared. So at that point, my mind was racing where my dad was like, maybe someone stole it. Maybe it's gone. Maybe he's telling the truth. And I was like, I don't believe it. No way. This is ridiculous. Let's get there. So we skipped the gym and drove the last 45 minutes to an hour to beat the salesman there. The salesman said he was going to the doctors and after that he would be immediately in. So once we got to the dealership, I walked right up to the secretary and said, hey, I'm here to get my Jeep. Where's my Jeep? Uh, supposedly it was vandalized today. And the lady looked at me like, vandalized Jeep? What are you talking about? Looked at my dad, looked at me. Everybody's looking at each other like, wait, what are you talking about? I'm like, wait, it's Monday morning, nine o'clock in the morning, and you're telling me the coffee shop talk and the water talk has not been about my car being vandalized? Instantly, I asked for a sales manager. I was pissed. I was like, wait, something is fishy. What is going on? I asked another sales guy there and I said, hey, is my dude mm, blanking out his name right now? Coming in later today? He said, yeah, man, never misses a day. He said, bear with me though, the manager of the entire store, the general manager of the branch is super busy because he's dealing with some crazy shit and putting out fires. Well, little did I know that fire was my sales guy calling him and giving him a heads up of what was going on. So I walked in, met this sales manager, Super nice guy, right? Super nice guy. I'm not taking anything away from him. Super nice guy. He got the shit into the deal because he got screwed by a salesman. So my dad and I sit down, plop, sit down, me, my dad. And next to my dad was this super huge bouncer looking North Jersey guy, trench coat on, pissed off, hands in his pocket, just kind of angry, looking like he's the muscle in case anything goes wrong. And the general manager looks at me and goes, man, I'm so sorry you guys drove here of all that way but the car was sold on Saturday what the car was sold um I signed an agreement Wednesday hold on last time I checked Wednesday is before Saturday so there's absolutely no reason that this should be happening yeah I'm really sorry guys I'm really sorry the car was sold on Saturday we double sold this car it never happens Anyway, point being at this point, I'm livid, I'm pissed, I'm going through the roof, and I had to go on a walk. So, I went on a walk, kind of cooled off, came back in and talked to the manager. I was like, dude, how does this happen? I don't believe you. Show me the contract. Show me it was sold. So they did. They sold the car out from under me and totally screwed me. So, after back and forth, them saying they're going to hook me up and help me, nothing was done. The manager did contact me outside of some business stuff and helped me out with some other things but it has nothing to do with me getting a new car at this point. And so I'm without a car, without my Jeep, a great Jeep. And so I went to my backup. I went to a backup option that I was also taking a look at and I knew it was close by, it was only two hours away. And I scheduled an appointment for a week later on my next off day. I was ready, I was ready to go. I was, you know, had all the financing stuff set and ready to go. I was set ready to go and that is where this video began this morning that's where this began i was stoked i'm like you know what i won't get screwed again i don't mess up twice i don't do the same thing i don't make the same mistake twice and so we drove all the way to chambersburg pennsylvania this dealer mind you has had all of my information for almost three weeks because i was actually going to buy this jeep prior to finding the white jeep that i found beforehand and then ended up going with so that fell through, I got screwed on the first one, and I went back to my original that I was talking to, set up an appointment, went in, set up an appointment, went in, opened it, investigated everything, made sure it was in perfect condition with my dad, drove it around the lot, asked her to do a test drive, but wanted to get the paperwork started beforehand, and she asked me, 
hey, are you still at the Pennsylvania address? And I said, yeah, that's where I want to register the vehicle. And she goes, okay, let me see your license. So I gave her my old Pennsylvania license, which obviously at this point I had a California license. And she goes, oh, no, no, we can't do this. We can't do this. We can't do this paper. We can't register it here if your license is invalid. I'm like, well, yeah, it's still, it's not expired. The dates are like 2021. It's just clipped because I have, I can't have two licenses. And she goes, no, you can't have a license in California. And so point being is I didn't know this. I didn't think anything of it because she made it seem like everything was good to go. Come down, test drive the car, make sure you want it. And you'll be leaving with it that day. So she then tells me that a DMV is about 10 seconds down the road. 10 seconds meaning like 10 minutes of a drive. So me and my dad haul ass there and we get in there, grab the paperwork for the DMV five minutes before it's closing. And they go, wait, you need hard copies of a passport. You need multiple utility bills. You need your raised stamp of approval on your social security card and your birth certificate. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're trying to tell me that to get a new driver's license that looks like this Pennsylvania one that has a clip in it, even though I have another valid driver's license, two things showing on the same person. Then I have digital copies of my birth certificate, social security card, and passport all sitting here ready to give you. You will not give me a new license because it doesn't have a raised stamp? Yes. I lost it. I lost it. I went absolutely crazy. And I walked out. Thankfully, I didn't do anything stupid. And me and my dad got back in the car. And at that point, I knew that there was nothing that could have been done that day. I started driving home, knowing that I wasted four hours one way, knowing that I had wasted seven hours on my previous off day for absolutely nothing. And now I would have wasted five to six hours on the next off day I had. I immediately was driving home and I thought to myself, I should call the dealership, letting them know that I'm not going to be able to come back because I can't get a license today. When I did that, they then were so angry at me because it's my fault. I got mad. So when I called the dealership to let them know, I said, this is ridiculous that you guys didn't tell me this. And when I did that, they were so upset with me and thought it was ridiculous that they should tell me as salespeople that that's what was going to happen. So they hung up on me. Drove about another 15 or 20 minutes with my dad and then I realized that my 20 some dollar monster auxiliary cable with lifetime warranty is in the car that I'm no longer purchasing and I'm out 20 extra bucks. So all in all, with this entire situation, I screwed myself so many different ways, it is absolutely insane. So if you watch this video, be careful car shopping, don't be stupid, and I appreciate you watching this. Welcome to story time. I'm going to do these more often. If you like this, drop a comment below, drop a thumbs up. Thanks for checking this out. I got a lot to do this weekend. I'm going to go hop on a train right now and train down to Philly before my flight. Thanks for watching as always. Subscribe and follow me on Instagram, Kerm Blevins. See you guys.